see things as they are. Seeing things as they are, realizing himself, that is the meaning of attaining enlightenment, then he is trying to talk us the intellect, the way how we can realize. So then realization is not something that we can share with others. Parents are not able to share the realization with their kids. Brothers and sisters are not able to share the realization because realization is kind of personal, very personal thing. So then we have to apply ourselves in China to that. The Buddha's realization is there with the Buddha. No one can share the realization. But Buddha guidance, Buddha already delivered 84,000 sermons to explain, to explain the way how we can realize. Just to show the fact. 84,000 sermons. Spending 45 years traveling here and there, the video spent time, then we for ourselves with the love of the most compassionate words. Dear friends, unfortunately, around the world, around the world, people are recognizing the Buddha as a religious leader. According to the my capacity, this is the main mistake. I mean the human history. No one can change that history. Because when you put it into his teachings, the teachings of the Buddha, into that, that religious basket, some of most of the people in the world are ready to open that basket. Why? Religious, religious. What we can do with the religious? Nothing. Because we know basically not for the religion. Religion for what? Religion for to develop your faith. The Buddha did not come to this world to help us to develop our faith. Then that was the main aim to make us to open our mind. To gain wisdom. That is the purpose of Buddha. He became Buddha to help us to develop our insight or to gain our wisdom. But unfortunately, around the world, most of the people, particularly with the traditional Buddhist countries, they accept the teachings of the Buddha as a Buddha. Group of people who are considering as educated, they are taking the teachings of the Buddha as a philosophy. These two mistakes we have in the world, but for me, the teachings of the Buddha is way of life. It not just me as philosophy, of course it is not a religion for me. But then when we go here and there, are, People directly ask, what kind of religions you have? And normally, according to the audience, I, I, sometimes I say, I don't have a religion. What? You don't have a religion? You are wearing the robe and uh, you share it your head? Yes, I do. For what? I do these things to manage my time. To manage my time, how? For example, let's think about we have an invitation to go to a party. Tonight we have an invitation to go to a party. How many hours do you want to spend to find the shoe? Find the clothes, what, 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 what are you going to wear? How many hours? At least one hour you have to spend to select a cloth to go to. Ah, but I only within in one minute I can go to find which one is the clean door. And just so I can put on my <laughs> shoulder, I can really very good. 
You know they are located here. You know they are tied here. My son is there, my brother is here, my wife is there, my husband is here. All these concepts are there. The concept, what is that concept? Things are existing. You know that concept. This is the this is the nature of ignorance. This ignorance is very powerful. This ignorance not helping us to realize the reality. Therefore, you always develop desire. You like to see beautiful things. You like to hear beautiful things. You like to have a comfortable life. Always you are looking your, your, your comfort. You are looking always for comfort. Why? Because desire is there. When you are living with ignorance, because of ignorance, desire arises. Desire arises in your mind. Now you have ignorance and same time it arises in your mind desire. It's look like when you are buying one thing, you are really buying one thing that is eternal, you get free desire. Now you have both ignorance and desire. Now this is the reason to have a conflict among yourself and in the world. How? Ignorance is here. Desire also here, but through this ignorance and desire, numerous thoughts will be there in your mind. These thoughts are not able to fulfill. Now, conflict is here. Because of that conflict, and the others. Yes. You have concept, there are beautiful things. But you are not able to take all these beauty. You are not still with this beauty all the time. We wish to live with people who we like, but it's not happening. There are some people who we don't like. You don't like to talk to them, you don't like to meet them, you don't like to see them, but those people are here with us. So they can tell us, I hate that person, no reason. Why? I don't like to see him, I don't like to talk to him. But that person always here with us. He might be in your office, perhaps sometimes he is inside the house. So then, talking is there and we are always arising there. No one likes to get involved. No one likes losing their hair. No one likes losing their eyesight. No, no one likes losing their uh, hearing. But who can do so? No one can do so. So then, anger arises. Because ignorance and desire. Ignorance always say, says us, things are existing. Desire always giving us Okay, take opportunity to have ownership. Desire. Always giving us ownership. Ownership regarding what? Regarding things that you like. Okay, and automatically uh, advice in the name. These three things are not helping us to be happy. Happiness is going away because these three things are together here. There's no way to be happy. This is about if you are living with anger, can you be happy? If you are living with anger, is there any, anything that you can use as an enjoy, happy, exciting thing? No way. It's not allowed to be happy. So then, happiness going away. Happiness going away. So then, you don't have happiness. 
So then, what is the original thoughts that we have? We want to be happy. We want to be happy. Sukhatana and Buddha, the Buddha said, all living beings are always willing to be happy. Not just human beings. All living beings are looking for happiness, searching happiness. So then, we have to focus on the teachings of the Buddha. The way how we can establish our happiness. Because happy is the arising of the Buddhas. So for the Dharma of Prabhu, how it's become happy, happy for us, we have the opportunity to find the path to be happy. That path is the path delivered by the Buddha with Hakasamit and other famous thoughts. So then what is that path? We have to go against our ignorance, we have to go against our desire, we have to go against our unhappy, which is the creator of unhappiness, that is our anger, hatred. So then, how we can go against our ignorance? How we can go against our desire? How we can go against our anger? The way people talk, people have idea and talk, they say this. Okay, to reduce your desire, that is the energy. To reduce your desire, that means that is doing something else, but not a few. Right? We have to focus on defending the origination. Defending the origination starts with what? Avidya, Patya, Sankhara. Ignorance is the first. Ignorance is the first. Because of ignorance, we have to accumulate things. Accumulation means not physical. We like to gather things. We like to gather information as pictures, as sounds, as taste, all these are information. All these information are gathered in there in your mind. So then We have to merely address ignorance to get rid of desire, to get rid of freedom. Just practicing generosity is not enough. That's why the Buddha said in the morning we will get a chance to listen to Bhante Ji, who was explaining about how the ritual path, the way how you can apply. Dhāna, Sīla, Bhāra. Dhāna means practicing diversity. Sīla means practicing observing precepts. The way how you can develop your heart. And the meditation. These are the three activities that we are supposed to apply as a Buddhist practice in our day-to-day life. So then, through these applications, through these activities, we can develop our seal of power visibly and we can gain concentration. We can develop mindfulness and concentration. Through these mental stages, development of these mental stages, yes, we can gain wisdom. This is our goal. Just practicing democracy. You may not have the benefit of your the desire, right? Desire always connected with ignorance. Desire always connected with ignorance. Why are you still so? For example, let's think of the simple thing to understand. I have two materials in my palm. In here, 
I have piece of gold. And here I have piece of iron. I'm asking from you to pick which you like most. Then which you like to take? Good. You have to take good. Why? Why do you want to have this good piece of gold? Because you have concept. What is the concept that you have? Gold is valuable than iron, piece of iron. Who gave this concept? Who gave this concept? The society, yes, the society. We know geography specialists, they are able to explain, okay, this is real. Gold is real, you will not find it anywhere. There are particular places that you can find gold. Gold is real, so therefore it is demanding. Iron is not there like that, it does not have demand like that. So then, using their concept, economics ready to say, oh, it is demanding, so then we have to price up. We have to price up. Which is demanding, we have to price up. The price is increasing. Now, there are some other people who are, who are you are building uh, some kind of uh, uh, astro astrology things and things. those people are able to explain okay, what is going to do to reduce your to what? to reduce your unfortunate uh, they, are, they have some kind of explanations okay, this is not good time, this is bad time for you so they are to be we need to wear some poor piece of gold in your finger, right? in your necklace or something like that. They have so many explanations. Is there any reasons for their explanations? Just made up the stories. Just made up the stories. So they, these three people, geography specialists, economics, and this myth, as the stories and people create all these concepts. Then the concepts are there in our mind. All these concepts are coming with concepts. That's why at the beginning of our life, our parents are ready to introduce gold. Put it in our hands, so it sometimes as a ring. So many ways they are to introduce to us to gold. So the concept is here. Now, these concepts are powerful than any other. That's why some people try to kill someone, others, to get their goal. Just to get their goal. To get their goal. Even the value of life is not caring of them, thinking of their piece of goal. Piece of goal. So, yeah. We have to take these two pieces, gold and iron, and we have to go to the lab, physics lab. Now we are in the physics lab, giving this piece to them. Okay. Now, as a, uh, as a, uh, in, the, in the lab, uh, we can ask them to do, to divide it into small pieces. Atom would be the small pieces that they can divide it in. This is lab. Now they can take care of them. Then when we ask from them, is there any difference with the gold atoms and iron atoms? They might say yes. Because still they have concept, things are existing. But according to Abhidharma, when it's become four elements, for eight elements, there is no difference. Oh, gold elements are here, iron elements are here, gold elements are available than iron. There is no explanation. Earth elements is earth elements, fire elements is fire elements. It doesn't matter appearing as a gold or appearing as a iron, it doesn't matter. Then it's become four elements. 
But still, that the diseases are now not finished yet, then they still have concept. Things are existing, therefore, they are say, No, oh, it's important. That's a big thing. I have been going to them after I know them. But the reality is, Earth element is Earth element. There is no different gold or iron. Even the physical human body, there is no difference when it becomes Earth elements. Fire element is fire element. Air element is air, there is no difference. So then, why do we have concept, belief, views, both are very well there, I am. That is our ignorance. Because we believe those people's explanations, okay, those people are explaining in their capacity so that they are helping us to develop our ignorance. They were helping us. They give all these their explanations, teachings, guidance, stories. We need to believe. We need to believe. So, gold is valuable than iron means just a belief. Just a belief. So, that believers come to ignorance. So, then. Just practicing generosity, can you eliminate your desire? No, you have to address ignorance, you have to address ignorance. Because ignorance is the main reason to increase your desire. So therefore, just practicing generous, generosity is not enough. You have to Practice generosity. Practicing generosity, we have to take the opportunity to develop our mindfulness, to develop our concentration. Why? Without concentration, there is no wisdom. So, without mindfulness, there is no way to develop your concentration. All these are the paths. The development stage, the base is mindfulness. So, therefore, we have to develop our mindfulness. How we can develop mindfulness? Then we have to practice generosity, meditation, and uh, observing precepts, developing knowledge. These three activities are the activities that are supposed to go together. Generosity is not enough. These three activities are supposed to go together. And then we can gain wisdom. Wisdom is the solution. Wisdom is the solution. Wisdom is the liberation. We are looking for liberation. We are looking for liberation. We are working on that. Again, wisdom is the solution. So the teachings of the Buddha. We have to use to develop our wisdom, to gain wisdom, to gain wisdom. So then, teachings of the Buddha not just to worship, not just to do rituals. But according to the explanations, to reach wisdom, to gain wisdom, there are methods in this method. When you practice it, when you start to practice and practicing and practicing, practicing and practicing, gaining mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom, you can reach Sotapanna. That is the first level of sainthood. Sotapanna. When someone attains in Sotapanna, that person already gets rid of three things. Sakkari duty, Vichitikya, Sila Bhattaparavasa. Sakkari duty is a wrong view. What is that wrong view? Think in thus, this is my body, this is me. I am existing. That is Sakkari duty. So, when you are attaining Sotapanna, you are going to 
eliminate this concept. There is no more existing that concept, me, my, myself. This, this is my body, this is me. That concept we can eliminate attaining Sota Pani. That's what I start subtracting. Which is which are doubt. Doubt about the Buddha, the teachings of the Buddha, the practitioners who attain enlightenment. If you have any doubt, if you have any doubts about your mother, father, this world, next world, all these doubts will be vanished attaining a Sotapanya. The third one is rituals, religious concept. Religious concept. Around the world, there's a concept. What is that concept? I don't I don't belong to any religion. In singular it says, Niva The first person who introduced this concept to the world didn't have a total Buddha. The Buddha is the person who introduced this Niradanta concept to the world. If someone practicing the teachings of the Buddha, having goal to attain Nibbana, gain wisdom, he is on that path. What is that path? To become a person who don't belongs to a religion. It's explaining Sota Pani Sometimes you can see some people say some atheists. But really, really is not there. They have concepts and ideas. Things are existing. Things created by someone else. It is not happening naturally with the help of many reasons. They don't have that concept. Who don't have that concept? They can't be atheists. They can't say, I not belong to a religion. The Buddha is the person who believes in the world, how we can stay without a religion. You can stay without a religion as a result of your wisdom. Without developing the wisdom, no one can stay without the religion. There might be some lifestyle, you don't do prayers, you don't do worship. That is something else, but concepts are there. Religious concepts are there. When people are living with ignorance, religious concepts are there. No one can eliminate their religious concepts. Only the way attaining enlightenment, in the first level of enlightenment, which we call Sota Pana, is the first step that you can get rid of that religious concept. For example, the teachings of the Buddha is not mere a religion. It is way of life. Who are applying this method for their day to day life? They can see this happens. If they are suffering, they can take it of suffering to this practice. If they are live happy, unhappy, then they can take it of their unhappiness to this practice. So the teachings of the Buddha is not directing us to practice a religion. The teachings of the Buddha is the method that we can use to develop our mind, to gain our wisdom. Gaining our wisdom, we can see things as they are. When we are able to see things as they are, there is no reason to be desire. There is no reason to develop attachment. There are four things. 
taking the teachings of the Buddha on his birthday, we have duty, we have responsibility to respect his teaching, apply the method for that is the best way that we can respect the Buddha. The Buddha said, there was a monk who always going with the Buddha and he always coming to when Buddha getting ready to do the Dhamma talk. That monk always come in front of the Buddha. He want to sit in front of the Buddha. It's continuously, it's went away, then it's it start to continuously going, going on, then you do this. Why? Why do you want to sit in front of me to look at me all the time? Then that man, he had only to see the Buddha, to look at the Buddha, then the Buddha said. What you can do looking at me, looking at this body, which is infernal. Go and practice Dhamma. See Dhamma. You can see me through the Dhamma. No one will develop any attachment to this physical body. It becomes useless. It's decaying. It's not mine. Why are you looking at this body? No reason. No meaning. But if you can see my guidance, my teachings, through these guidance and teachings, you can understand who I am. That is the best thing. So therefore, we can see the Buddha through his teachings. As, the, as a real follower, as a real students of the Buddha, what we are supposed to do. We have to see the Buddha through his teachings, guidance. How? Apply the Buddha, we can see ourselves, we can see the results, then we can see the real the Buddha. So this is the best method. This is the best teaching's guidance. The Buddha did not ask to worship him. The Buddha did not ask, okay, you have to build statues for me. All these concepts created by the people who were thousands of years ago, what we respect for this? We need these things. Because our mental capacity is developed. Most of the people are not ready to practice Dhamma. They are engaged with the real guidance of the Buddha. Still, they want to practice many other things. Mostly, traditional Buddhist countries, they always engage in practicing generosity. They like to do things, practicing generosity, but they don't like to listen to Dhamma. They don't like to practice meditation. They don't cannot uh, discipline it much. It's very little, I'm not very, very much. But if I go even here, how many people were there outside? How many people were there outside? But how many of you are here? In here? You are here. Really, you have intention to listen to that and to learn something. The people who were here, they had thoughts, yes, we want to go to the temple. Yes, that concept is very good. You're not supposed to come to the temple just to eat. You're not supposed to come to the temple just to offer dana. That is also a very important thing, okay? You're not supposed to come to the temple just to offer dana. So then that is the real purpose there would be. The purpose of you is I want to practice. I want to really engage with the teachings of the Buddha. Not just 
take care of my body. This means just you take care of your body. Giving food to mouths means just you are helping to take care of their body. Who has to? Who has to? So therefore, as a real practice of how we have to learn today how we can honestly respect the Buddha. You can respect the Buddha applying his teachings to our day to day life. Applying the teachings to our day to day life. So then, how we can apply the teachings of the Buddha day to day life? In this period, I would like to pay attention the way how we can apply these applications to our day to day life. Practicing diversity. How we can practice diversity every day? You can have the moment. There are three ways that you can practice Dharma. Diversity. Dharma Dharma, Dharma Dharma, Abeda. Dharma Dharma means giving basic needs to others. Giving basic needs. Food is there. Clothes is there. Shelter is there. Medicine is there. So then, how you can practice this Amitabhana every day? No. It is impossible the way how you are practicing. It is impossible. Collecting food, going to the temple, operating. How we can do every day? Go to the temple every day? It is impossible. So then, how you can do it? Just think about yourself. Is this body belongs to you? No. This body not belongs to you. This body is there with the help of many reasons. So then use this opportunity, okay? I have no obligations to take care of this body. When the time comes, give some tools, it's need with the loving kind of thoughts to this body. When the time comes, give a rest this body with loving tenderness thoughts. As we know, as a lay person, you are going to be others all the time. So, you will be happy. When you are going to work, you are living there. There is also a kind of pain. So, when you are living with these people, use this opportunity. Use this opportunity to practice diversity. Now, as a mother or father, as a husband or wife, it doesn't matter. When you are preparing drinks or something to eat, prepare that things with loving kindness, compassion, and thoughts. Prepare with loving kindness, compassion, and thoughts. To practice diversity. It doesn't matter, husband or wife, whoever, it doesn't matter, it's not clear or it doesn't matter. If I can tell you, you do it with the capacity of loving your next door. You are practicing jealousy. As a parent, you are preparing food for your kids. Do it with the loving your next door. For practicing jealousy, you don't want to go to the temple. While you are eating, you can think about the food and the body. Because of this food, you can survive. Because of this food, you can get rid of suffering, the pain, the pain. Think about it. May I be very happy and peaceful. Thinking thus, you can practice jealousy. You don't want to do it, you don't want to do it, something like that. Not only that, you are doing business. After you have done your eating, your drinking, when you are doing business, think about unseen things, they are with you, so many unseen things. While you are doing business, think about those unseen things. May they use these things as they are to make them do their happy work. You practice in your 
If someone not so five percent, then they can be Buddhist. No way. If certain percent, no one can be Buddhist. Because around the world, we have lower and lower norms, values, values, all of these things are there in the society. Then everybody should be Buddhist. It's not happening in the country. All these concepts, law and order, norms, values, values, all these are concepts. All these concepts go back. They are disciplined. They are disciplined. So then basically, why would they introduce, why would they accept five precepts, eight precepts, monastic precepts? What is the purpose? What is the reason? This is the how healthy audience. Very important, healthy audience. Healthy again, physical healthy? No, no, not physical healthy. Mental health is the most important. Mental health is the most important. What is the main cause for mental issues? Main cause is doubt and fear. The Buddha introduced these precepts to reduce their doubt and fear. I don't kill any living being. Why? I like, I like. I don't steal anything from others. Why? I like things that I have. I like to use these things. If someone uh, try to get these things from me, I don't like it. So therefore, I want to keep things with me. The things belongs to me. I don't want to get any disturbed. On any of that. So using that course, I'm, I'm ready to respect other things that belongs to them. I don't want to take any of these things from them without their conscience, without their thoughts. So therefore, discipline is very important for your mental health. Discipline is very important for your mental health. Each and every moment, think why I'm not stealing, why I'm not killing, why I'm not lying, why I'm not using drugs and alcohol. Think about this. Having this meaning, you can away from these things. You can take care of your mind, particularly mental health. No doubt, no fear. Doubt and fear is the main reason to have stress. When you are living with this stress without taking care of that stress, that stress will become anxiety and depression. After that, you have to go to see your counselor or something. You have to be fine. You may not be able to see where to get that kind of problem of mind. So, we are observing precepts for what to have a clean, clear mind. Peaceful mind, relaxed mind. The other stress, the reason would be uh, you don't follow these precepts. That is the hidden reason. Whenever we have stress, reason would be very hidden. You have to find out the reasons, then you can find it the reasons. So therefore, we as Buddhist followers, we observe precepts not to go to heaven. But sure, yes, we are observing precepts that you can go to heaven, that is, that is something else. But, in this very life, you can be a heavenly, heavenly being, observing precepts, free from suffering, free from stress. Free from stress. It is very support for your development of your spiritual development. So therefore, we observe research for what to reduce our stress. Live happily without fear and doubt. That is the reason. That's the second one. The third one, meditation, mind cultivation. Meditation, the meaning is not really connected to that original word, bhava. The bhava is bhava. 
to see this, this reality, we have to develop fear, sati, samadhi, panya. Sati mindfulness, samadhi concentration, panya mindfulness. To explain these things, the Buddha has been spending 45 years delivering 84,000 sermons. Is the Buddha weak? Is that the reason? Is not a good teacher? Is that the reason that we can spend that much that low and doing that much experience? No. Audience is weak. People who were there, they were not able to understand the teachings of the Buddha in past. You can see these differences. In the life stories, there are a person who just came to see the Buddha, to ask the Dhamma. What did they say to that person? The time was not enough there. That person really wanted to get something from the Buddha. Then he said, Dikte Dikta Vakta Sute Sutta Vakta. See things as they are. Listen things as they are. That's it. That's it. He was able to attend the He was able to attend the In his first sermon, Dhammachakka Pavatta Sutta, after delivering the Sutta, only then he was able But that person, Dhammachiriya, just listening to Buddha, see things as they are, listening things as they are, he was able to get it. There are some other explanations. When Chariputta met Venerable uh, Asadi, and then Venerable Chariputta asked from it's not a monk, he was a good person. But he was looking the poor thing. He met Venerable Lassadi and then seeing Venerable Lassadi was very happy. And then he asked Venerable Sir, who is your teacher? Then Venerable Lassadi started to explain who is his teacher is. Just listening to the suspense of Sariputta, even he is not a monk, as a lay person, was able to attain Sotapa. He was able to attain Sotapa. Whenever Sariputta attains Sotapa, not listening to Buddha, the Buddha is a disciple, whenever possible. You mean it's just a spend to attend for that time. Then all these things were there, but the Buddha spent 45 years traveling here and there, delivering 84,000 sermons because we are very different. We are very different. The words that come from me, in this audience, we are not taking the same meaning in form. Because we don't have different meaning. But I have one word, but we have, if we have 50 people in here, we have 50 meanings. All these are depending on our mind. That's why the Buddha spent 45 years to cover this world. It's given to servants. But anyway, the servants are here. You can see, you can listen to Dhamma, you can read through the repetitive. So, our duty, our responsibility is here. So, the Buddha's duties have been done. And our duty is not to step. So when we develop our energy and effort to realize the teachings of the Buddha and to apply 
his guidance teachings to our daily life to attain enlightenment. To get rid of all unhappy stages, suffering, that is our duty, that is our responsibility, that's a very strong. Not just to worship. Not just to worship. We have to worship with me. Applying to the kind of other people. So this is the way how we can be a real practice. So I, I think that would be enough for today. So a real talk. There's a real talk on that we do. We can listen to that we do later. Before the real talk, where we do it. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.
Vijanati learn Dabbi. Dabbi means spoon. Spoon. Soup means curry. Rasang, the taste. Yatha, uh, just as. Meaning is, even if a fool attends on a wise man for his whole life long. He does not learn Dhamma 
just as a spoon learns not the taste of curry okay that is the meaning this is very wonderful sermon wonderful uh, what we call teaching of the buddha there is a story behind this the story is one day venerable udai udai is one of the disciples of the buddha the monks came to listen to the dhamma and after after buddha delivered the dhamma sermon is a very meaningful dhamma sermon after that all these monks left the lecture hall but the venerable udai stayed behind and he sat on a comfortable seat then some monks visited the buddha the first group of monks left another group of monks came and they did not know this monk called udai they have never seen him they have talked to him and they thought this monk also he looks very old they asked him uh, some questions about aggregates elements and so forth or uh, some questions this monk could not answer any of these questions then they said <clears throat> this must be a fool who has been living with the buddha all life long but he does not know dhamma so he went to the buddha and reported this he could not answer when the boy sir we asked him how long he has been here he said all oh, life long he was here with you many years not from maybe not from from the childhood but maybe after some years he became a monk and lived with the buddha then buddha taught them this teaching and he said a fool even if we associate with the wise uh, for life long he does not learn dhamma like the spoon that does not taste food okay so panditam payur pasati associate with the wise that means fire person means associating with the associating this particular monk has been associating with me but he never asked me any question so buddha in this is wonderful uh, no very noble and compassionate uh, compassion of the buddha he wanted people to ask him questions when you ask questions you improve your knowledge that is called dhamma vichaya sambhojanga one of the enlightenment factors is called dhamma vichaya that means investigating dhamma so people who do not know very much if they don't have very much time to learn 
as monastics. Occasionally some people may have, but most of the time they don't have time to learn. They are very busy with their daily work, duties, jobs. And therefore they visit learned monks and learn the Dhamma, asking questions. They must ask, uh, you know, even, even in Mangala Sutta, we said, Bahu Satyam is a sip point, learning, having uh, learned a lot of Dhamma points is a very, it's a blessing. So, they don't learn. Although he has been associating with them, they don't ask any question. Asking question is always encouraged by the Buddha. So, <clears throat> the Buddha said, uh, monks, they must ask the Buddha about Vinaya, code of discipline, what are the heavy offenses, what are the light offenses, what are the <coughs> uh, offenses that uh, because of the rule, they break the offense and sometimes some of them are just an offense by breaking. There are no heavy karma, but it is uh, just uh, breaking the rules of etiquette, manners and so forth. And then there are certain rules that, uh, that the monastic should observe for their own uh, behavior, uh, which may not be a big offense. Uh, they are just uh, in, in the public appearance, in the, in the public's eyes, they don't look very nice. That is not a very monkish appearance. So, Uh, therefore, to arouse the faith in those who do not have faith and to increase the faith in those who have faith, the monastic must behave in a certain way, following certain rules and regulations. So, therefore, they must ask when they or then they must ask what sort of rules we must observe, uh, how we must uh, eat, what to eat, when to eat and so forth. They must go and ask questions. Uh, so this learning, they must learn uh, for foundations of mindfulness, for effort for, uh, for uh, accomplishment, five, uh, five faculties, five powers, seven factors of enlightenment and noble eightfold but These things are, these are called seven categories of learning, seven categories of learning and they all together become 37. And the Buddha said, I, I taught all these things for the benefit of monks and nuns. So the one who associates with the Buddha or learned person, they must go from, to him from time to time and ask this question regarding all this. Uh, what are the for, for 12 uh, faculties, ayatana. What are the 12 ayatanas? Ayatana means uh, uh, the, the factors like I visual object. Here, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, 
ya the here at the hearing faculties and we should uh, sound and the nose smell tongue taste body tangible and mind mind object these are all together called 12 uh, ayatanas ayatana means the factors of establishment then elements 18 elements chakku dhatu rupa dhatu chakku vinyana dhatu i elements form elements i consciousness elements e elements sound elements e consciousness elements nose elements smell elements nose consciousness elements tongue elements taste elements tongue consciousness elements then uh, body elements tangible elements body consciousness elements mind elements mind objects elements and mind consciousness these are the 18 elements Atarhudhatu. then uh, 12 faculties indriya uh, indriya chakku indriya uh, rup indriya so indriya sad indriya like that 12 faculties then four types of food four types of food material food called kabalinkara ahara and contact fasar and then thought mano sanchetnahara and consciousness vinyanahara so kind of food each of them explain in detail then uh, first contact six kind of contact six kind of uh, feelings chakku sampasa ja vedana rupa sampasa ja vedana feeling arises through the eye contact through the ear contact through the nose contact tongue contact mind contact and body contact and these are the six contacts and all these things they must occasionally from time to time go and ask many other questions related to Abhidhamma, uh, various parts of suttas and just like this morning I mentioned what did the Buddha, what did Siddhartha Gautama did, what did he do to attain enlightenment? We said that he attained enlightenment and he was supremely enlightened and we don't know very much about what he did. So people must ask questions when they associate with the learned people. And like that, they must learn. Then there are uh, three ways of learning, three purposes of learning. One purpose is called Alagadda Pariyatta. Alagadda Pariyatta means uh, somebody uh, learn the Dhamma, uh, what I mentioned and many more, uh, he learn it only to uh, win debates, to show off uh, and he want to make others impressed to gain gain material things and become famous as a learned person for this kind of reason somebody learn dhamma 
that is just any average ordinary person can do uh, but they don't put them into pra practice they are like just collecting and uh, if they use they use them for wrong purpose that is called alagadha pariya that also is a dangerous because there is a discourse in madhyam nikaya alagaddu pama sutta alagaddu pama sutta means the discourse on the simile of catching snakes simile of catching snakes when you catch snakes poisonous snakes you should know how to catch the snakes without without getting bitten if you caught the snake by the wrong place the snake will turn around and bite you sting you and that will cause your death or deadly sickness therefore when you catch the snake you got to catch him very carefully similarly when we learn dhamma only for those purposes that i mentioned earlier that can be dangerous because you don't understand the meaning you don't have the penetrative insight you can misinterpret misrepresent dhamma and tell others and you poison their mind if a snake bite you die the sore it is not infectious only you will have a problem you cannot transfer it to others like covid-19 it is not infectious but learning dhamma for wrong purpose and misinterpret the dhamma is far more dangerous than that not only you can poison your mind but you can poison the millions of people's minds and that will hurt you not only this life but next life as well and if you poison many thousands of millions of people they suffer only this, not only this lives but they suffer in sansara just like you so when people learn the dhamma they learn it properly correctly rightly and put it into practice and that kind of learning this uh, misinterpret misunderstanding and so forth is called alagadha paryaya alagadha paryaya learning like catching snakes yet is very good then there is another way of learning dhamma that's called nittharana paryakti nittharana means somebody learns the dhamma with the very sincere intention honesty sincerely with the intention of liberating oneself from samsarik suffering nittharana so they learn sila samadhi panya vimutti vimutti janana dasana and so forth they learn only with that intention teaching others is is additional thing the purpose is for us to liberate ourselves from sansarik suffering that's called nittharana varyata nittharana or sometimes they call nissarana letting go letting go even in, in the same uh, alagadhu sutta buddha said uh, monks even the you, you, you must let go of even the dhamma let alone adhamma that means you must let go of right dhamma let go of right dhamma not only wrong dhamma why if it become attached to the right dhamma 
you come you become religious fanatics my belief is the right thing you are saying wrong you don't understand i understand and they fight people do that and that's what we had a lot of religious wars in the past and therefore even the dhamma we learn only for that purpose to get rid of our suffering that is the second purpose third purpose is bandagarika paryatti bandagarika means just collect for their own purpose they have they have done what they, what what had to be done they finish attain full enlightenment they don't have to do anything else they practice meditation and understand again insight wisdom they <coughs> attain Maggapala and Nibbana. And then they, even they don't know everything. Even they have attained enlightenment, they don't know every part of Dhamma. They know only basic, most necessary things for the attainment of enlightenment. And therefore, even after that, they can learn if they want to be uh, more skill in teaching dhamma and so forth they learn but their purpose is called the complete and their learning is called like learning like a treasurer a treasure they collect is only for their own purpose that's called <coughs> uh bandhagar paryatti So then, sometimes, so, some individuals learn Dhamma to protect the Dhamma. Sometimes they even sacrifice their life in order to protect the Dhamma. With very difficult period, difficult time, various under difficult circumstances, they learn Dhamma, otherwise that will be forgotten. For that reason they learn Dhamma. So, that is called uh, learning Dhamma. And then normally, <laughs> after the talk is very short and uh, I spend one hour, one half of that time. And then to recite the Dhammapada stanza. Looking at it, each of you must recite it. But it is so many people are here. I don't think I can do that now. But normally I ask whoever, even she comes with us <laughs> sometimes, eh? and uh, they recite Dhammapada stanzas uh, just for them to familiarize with the Pali words and learn meaning, if possible, memorize. There are some people in Japan, Australia, uh, Sri Lanka, and various places. They learn this. Anyway, uh, so stanza uh, uh, those who have been associating with uh, those fools who associate with the wise even for their lifetime, they don't learn. This is sour, this is sweet, this is milky taste, this is this taste and that taste. They don't know whether it is spicy or not spicy and so forth. The spoon does not know anything. Although the spoon is turning the food here and there, 
running up and down, stirring and so forth, never learn, taste anything. But the next answer, I don't have time to go to the next answer, is related to that, just the opposite of it. Next answer is, uh, uh, no, I don't have time for that. Okay. Now, next answer is next Sunday. <laughs> Sorry. Now, friends, I like I like to spend few minutes in meditation. Okay. I think this may be enough for today. And those who are uh, on Zoom, please uh, remember there are many people in the center now, and uh, I don't ask all of them to recite. And next Sunday you all recite, those who are on Zoom, okay? Now let us do meditation. Oh, meditation. I don't think I have it here. Anyway, you know all this. Okay, now let me close it. Okay. okay. Friends, I'm also very tired now. <clears throat> Could you turn off this light? And this too. Okay. May all beings be happy and secure. Whatever living pain there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm another. As a mother who risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart, one should cultivate all the world, a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down, or when awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes in way again to birth in the womb. Yes, as mentioned this morning, with this metta thought in mind, yes, I let us spend some time in meditation.
By means of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join us always with the wise, until I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, May all be arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to Nibbana. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, friends, it is the time to take, to end your eight precepts this morning all of you or some of you observed eight precepts. I think you cannot maintain them in your daily life. Therefore, it is better for you to take the five precepts and end the eight precepts, practical observance now. So I think you all know the five precepts. Anyway, I like you to take it again. So say, Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Buddhang Saranang Gajjami Dhammang Saranang Gajjami Sanghang Saranang Gajjami Yutiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gajjami Dutiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gajjami Dutiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gajjami Dutiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gajjami Tatiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gajjami Satyampi Dhammang Saranang Gajjami Satyampi Dhammang Saranang Gajjami Satyampi Sanghang Saranang Gajjami Satyampi Sanghang Saranang Gajjami Tisarana Gamanang Sampunang Panati Pata Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Panati Pata Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Adinadana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Adinadana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Kamesu Mitrachara Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Kame Sukhichachara Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami 
ಮುಷಾವಾದೇರಮಣಿ ಸಿಕ್ಕಾಪದ ಸಮಿ ಸುರಮೇರಯ ಮಧ್ಯಪಮಾದಾಣೇರಮಣಿ ಸಿಕ್ಕಾಪದ ಸಮಿ ತಿಸರಣೇನ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಪಂಚಶೀಲಂಧಮ್ಮ ಸಮಾಧಯತ್ ಸಾಧುಕ ಸುರಕ್ಷಿತ ಅಪ್ರಮಾದೇನ ಸಂಪಾದೇತ ಶೀಲೇನ ಸುಗತಿ ಯಾಂತಿ ಶೀಲೇನ ಭೋಗ ಸಂಪದ ಶೀಲೇನ ನಿಭುತಿ ಯಾಂತಿ ತಸ್ಮಾಂ ವಿಶೋಧಯ Okay, you all have a wonderful evening and continue your practice and come again. Possibly, if you can make, come next week. If you cannot come when you can. And happy, have a very, very happy, peaceful Vesak day. Okay? ಎರಡು ಸಾವಿರ ನಾಯ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಹಾನ್ಸ ಎರಡು ಸಾವಿರ ನಾಯ್ ಬಾಂತೆ